One, two, three. Hi, this is Pop Tone, and this, this is Records in My Life. life. Filming. We are filming. Go. Christ, thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having us. And you guys have uh, your modern day album, which you guys are grooving on these days. You're enjoying. Not collectively, no. No. I mean, there's the, the thing is, when music first hits you, it starts about six or seven, but like 15 years old, 14, 15, it really gets you on, on what you really like. I remember Lemmy saying this, and with him it was the Beatles, and that never leaves you. And for me, it was always the glam stuff of the early 70s, really. When I saw that stuff, you know, seeing Roxy on the TV or on, on Top of the Pops, which is our version of MTV. You know, the Starman thing that all us at our age talk about, that, that was, you know, um, literally... It was, it was literally life-changing. You know, I remember I was 15 years old. My mum and dad took me downtown. They were shopping and stuff. And I went in and I thought, into a record store. And I thought, if I buy this record, because I'd just seen it on the TV the night before, if I buy this, everything changes in my life. And it, it, it's exactly what happened. And I remember sitting in the back of the car looking at this orange label. It was RCA, I think. Seven-inch signal uh, singles, a fifteen-year-old staring at it, and like I was sort of shaking because I thought everything's going to change now. And it was a, it was sort of uh, there's a real sort of decadent feeling about it. Uh, it was dangerous. It felt dangerous. But you know, before that, I was listening to Donald Duck and stuff like that. You know? <laughs> so As, um, it was. I, I really uh, doing this pop tone thing. I really got involved in trying to find interesting, young, contemporary opening acts. And I think that really kind of, and something kind of eclectic and just that something that has that energy. And I, Diva's helped and my wife's helped with be searching. And so um, POW, P-O-W were great. Um, and uh, what's the act from, oh, there was uh, Geneva Jacuzzi. She was wonderful. Kind of very theatrical, and, and one girl, and she would she makes her own stage props. Um, and tonight we have my younger daughter's band called Automatic, um, and they're, it's probably their fifteenth show, I think. Yeah, they're really great. It's like yeah. minimal post-punk, um, no guitars. Yeah, all femmes. I think they could, I, they could. I think they're going to get a record deal. I think they're going to go far. They have the potential for it. They've got nice. that commercial edge to them as well, but they're extremely minimalist as far as the keyboard. The, the keyboard lines are so simple, but to the point. Uh, the whole thing, the way the drums are and everything, is very. Uh, it, it's sort of. Uh, it's almost, It's like a very very young craft work to me. Wow. Yeah, it's in that genre for sure. That's a nice compliment. Mixed, yeah, yeah, mixed in with some Devo esque to a degree. A bit of kind of a suicide vibe here and there. Yeah. Um, but they're their own thing as well. Minimalist. Know. Yeah. Yeah, you should uh, check them out tonight because yeah. I think they could, they could do it. Thank you for the tip. We pride ourselves on, or we try yeah. to educate people on new, like interesting music. That's well, part yeah. of the show. There's no, another band called Surfboard, from, and they're like a. For me, they're. Um, I just got to know them from my daughters, and uh, they're really n lovely people. Um, they're like punk rock and they for me they capture the essence of that you know it's just uh you have to see them live it doesn't work you have to see them live and it's just this energy and this fun uh, yeah yeah and like um yeah all, all the stuff on uh leaving uh matthew's a, a great a and r guy and curator and he just finds these gems, whether they're contemporary acts or like Laraji's like been around since, you know, our time, you know, and he's just 
an amazing. Laraji did um, one of the you know ambient albums collaborated with you know oh, back wow. in the day. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's amazing. Yeah, he's still performing and stuff now and putting out a lot of new music and reissue stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just put out an album on Friday. On no, the let's hear about it. <laughs> Um, I have two projects actually I have like a more of a pop music project but this project it's called Yal Malik Frequencies and it's like channeled alien music instrumentals oh wow yeah that sounds pretty interesting it is and we can find it at all various it's on yeah it's on all the platforms excellent excellent yeah Yal Malik Frequencies it's it's all like music channeled from this other um, dimension called Yal Mal so that's wow. where the name comes from. I'm intrigued. Yeah. I shall give it a listen. And one last one. I know you guys thank you again for your for your patience in doing this. I wanted to ask about being in the studio or being present for an album, which you didn't make yourself. Was there an album out there which you would like to have been witness of? What's, what's the question? The, sorry, yeah. Would you, like to have, would you like to have seen the recording of an album, uh, one of your favorite albums? That's an which interesting you like to question. Have? You know what just came to mind was... Uh, uh, Lou Reed's album uh, that Bowie pr- produced. Uh, what, um, Transformer. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would have been really oh, interesting. That's, um, okay. One album, just one, right? Well, you can do I two. Think, okay. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to no. do Sergeant Pepper. Is it wow. Sergeant Pepper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going big. There's yeah. so many though around that time, like the early seventies for me. I think like um, uh, I think um, Os Mutantes would have been really interesting because they, you know, they were so inspired by like um, like Beatles and stuff like that. But they would like make all their own like custom made guitars to make all these really interesting sounds and stuff. Um, they were like one of my more formative bands that I listened to as a teenager that like really struck me. That's interesting. Music. You were listening to that as a teen because that's yeah. It's pretty. I worked at a record store, okay. so <laughs> there you go. There you go. I actually played. I opened for them here at this venue. With, oh really? With I, was, Ar- yeah, I was gonna say they played here. Yeah, a with Ariel Pink. Oh wow! And then and I opened for them at the rickshaw, um, but I think that would have been really interesting. Also, maybe like well, when Kate Bush was like writing all her songs just at home on the piano because I know she wrote like tons of songs and like Wuthering Heights and she, she was like 16 when she wrote that or something and just like kind of being a fly on the wall seeing her like just writing songs by herself on the piano or something you know would be really beautiful I think like tender I didn't realize she was so young when see. she wrote that I think like, so maybe she not was she was right really young. yeah yeah really young you know, I think I'm gonna cool. have to go with uh, "Here Come the Warm Jets" oh. yeah. when Eno split up with the rest of the band and the pressure was on. Uh, I've seen a little bit of footage of him in the studio, which when he he looked the best to me, just in those the very you know the early days of Roxy Music, where he looked like a sort of a stick insect or a very alternative <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. You know, I think he looked fantastic <laughs> the way he looked and that uh, that jacket with the feathers sticking out always go on about that i wonder where that thing is now but i i saw some footage of him walking down the street in london around the time that he just split off with roxy and was making that record and i'm i'm a very visual person and i love the way he looked back then and um i think to be a fly on the wall in the studio when he was making here come the warm jets with all the different musicians that he was using you know which that played very differently and the way he put that together and the pressure was on. I mean, I think he got a collapsed lung actually when he was making that because he was working himself, you know, down to the bone, you know, he's just like working real, really hard on that. And it's funny, I, something I wanted to say, well, it's a bit of a plug that something I, I, I just did as a single, but Diva was just talking about the um, alien, um, what you just said, I wasn't aware of that, the alien coming from a, another place because I've sort of got a semi-joke about that because I, in the break, I wrote this song called um, Alien Love, which you can get on the website. I've got to plug it because I want to sell it. <laughs> it's danielashmusic.com. Uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's a $4 download with a hidden track. Um, but the thing is, I, I also was... Uh, at the beginning of the recording of the track, uh, the, the guy that I was working with, uh, there was this sound that came from nowhere. 
It wasn't feedback. It sounded like electronic crickets. Is the only mm. thing I can. And we didn't know. And I, he said, "Look, there's this sound coming through. Not being melodramatic, but I don't know where it's coming from. I've switched everything off. I've switched it back on. Can't get rid of this sound. And it's exactly the sound that you hear on these, on those science fiction mm. films when they make when they make contact. Right. I'm not kidding." So we couldn't record it because the gear wouldn't work. The only way we, we could record it was to get a mic and stick it in front of one of the monitor speakers and record it on something else and then bounce it back because nothing was re working and just this sound was coming through. So it's on the beginning of the track and I let it run through the whole track because it might be some alien message. But That's uh, fantastic. Folks, when you buy the single, check out the Morse code at the beginning, see if you can decipher what it is. Because it, it goes in waves, it's not just one note, it's, it's this subtle differences. And we never found out where that came from. You know so, someone's going to be, there are people out there going to try and send you messages, right? Like, I'm not talking well, about the other, I, the alien, I got a people. romantic notion about it, and I, I'm, I'd like to think that, you know, because the whole song's about contacting a, an alien and having a relationship with this alien. Um, it's a female alien, you know, of course. And uh, so it sort of, it's a, it, it got me going. I was very excited about this sound at the beginning of the track that we, we managed to capture on a portable recorder and then lay it back in the track. So, thank you. Anyway. I'm looking forward to listening to that one too. Yeah, More than music. You. All right. Guys, final thing. Any words of wisdom? Yeah, stay at college. Otherwise <laughs> you'll end up like this. Still doing it. At 60 years old. That's a joke. That's he, he, just, he doesn't like it when I say jokes like that. He, says, well, he looks at me as if to say, what do you want about? We're having a great time. <laughs> Which we are. You're all smiling. It can't be that bad. No. Yeah, we, well, it's better than working in a bank, isn't it? it, it sort of. could be worse. We are yeah. really enjoying... We are really enjoying ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait to get home so I can do nothing for a couple of weeks. Good. I'm Good. knackered. Just before they became a mid <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you so much. All right.